Okay, Kyle, thank you so much for taking the time to film this video for our viewers. And um, could you give a little bit of an introduction of what your role is at TGG and what your background is? Yeah, Arby, happy to be here. Um, yeah, so background for myself, I am a controller here at TGG. I've been with the company off and on for the better part of five, six years. Um, been in the consulting space for that entire period of time. I uh, started with TGG and then did, excuse me, and then did a couple of years in uh, Big Four uh, public accounting. And uh, after that, I realized that my endeavors would be and my skill set would be better suited over with TGG. So I'm back and ready to rock and roll. Awesome. And I know that um, today we want to talk a little bit about audits specifically, since those are foreign to some business owners, and that's a lot of of what TGG helps with. So what would you say an overview of your audit experiences is like? And is that a stressful period for the business owners? What is that like on the front lines of the audit battleground? <laughs> yeah, so it's interesting. I actually, in my big four experience, I actually ran an audit program for, for a major content developer, major Fortune 500 company. So I have a pretty good background of this. Uh, we started it and we grew it into from um, and just to give some some background, it was a audit program for a content development uh, major Fortune 500 um, streamer, and it, we grew it from essentially like a four production audit program to over a 15 production audit program. So I, I've seen everything that that you can imagine in that space. And honestly, audits in general they are stressful to say the least. Um, and I, I think they're unreasonably unreasonably so. I mean, from an audit perspective, all we're requesting is information. We analyze it, provide feedback on the information provided. So from a business perspective, you know, obviously there's a little bit more work involved. You have to make sure you have, um, you dot your I's, you cross your T's, the information is available. But um, as long as we're working together and everybody's communicative and, and we get everything we need, the process is generally very smooth. Um, but I can understand the trepidation and uh, I understand kind of the obviously the stress that it can involve because obviously you're doubling your workload because you have to maintain and do your job from a day to day and then you have to add this whole separate nuance to your day to day. So it can be uh, stressful from that perspective. OK, yeah. Are there specific things that trigger an audit ever like red flags that will cause like the IRS to audit you specifically or is it more random? Yeah, so there's a couple different things that, that trigger audits. So some of them, and, and first of all, to take a step back, there's actually different categories of audits. You can have an internal audit, which is just the organization itself is auditing itself. Um, there's external audits, which are third party audits. Those can be contractual. Um, like, for example, in my experience in my my own program, it was just contractually based, just based off of the, the work that we had given them. We were outsourcing the content development to this third party, we were just cutting the check. So we, after the fact, we wanted to go back in and make sure, hey, we paid you all this money. Did you guys follow the processes and procedures that we had created to make sure we got the, the most bang for our buck, essentially? Um, and then there are IRS audits, as you, as you mentioned. So those can be random. They can be triggered by anomalies. Maybe, you know, one year your expenses went up significantly compared to a previous year. Maybe your deductions increased significantly compared to a previous year. Um, red flags like that can trigger audits, but they can also be randomly, you know, it's kind of a look at the draw in that case. So as long as you're reporting accurately and and you're not uh, overdoing or being a little overzealous on the on the expenses and on the deductions, really, you don't have much to worry about. Mm -hmm. OK, yeah, that makes sense. And that's important to differentiate the three different types that you said, internal, external, and IRS. Um, so given that there can be things that trigger this or contractually businesses may be obligated to do audits at some point, what would you say are the items that business owners and operators should be keeping in line? Like, what are the steps to be prepared for an audit? Yeah, I mean, I would say basic general practices to be prepared for an audit are just to make sure that your processes in line, your procedures are followed, and that you're keeping as much support and backup as you as you humanly possibly can. Um, the biggest gaps we're going to see are, are issues where the information just is not available, or maybe procedures weren't followed and, and things weren't saved where they should have been saved. There's a lot of instances of that. And if that occurs, then there are going to be circumstances where it just prolongs the audit. 
or for example, maybe the, um, like for an IRS audit, for example, maybe you pay penalties because we can't assume on the data. Um, so we have to make essentially educated guesses and, and that obviously can be negative in the form of, you know, the outgoing money that's involved. Um, from an external audit, um, it basically would just prolong the, the audit in the sense that it's um, data needs to be available. And if it's not, then we have to change the samples, you know, additional requests have to go out. So anything that can alleviate these stop gaps can be beneficial and just make the mm -hmm. process a lot smoother. So again, just making sure the data is available, making sure any processes and procedures that are in place on the company level are followed and making sure, you know, we dot our I's, cross our T's, communicate effectively. And from there, you know, the process generally goes pretty smooth. Okay. What does that look like when the, um, the requested materials are things that the business didn't save and doesn't have? Yeah, so there's two scenarios. So if, if you're talking like an external audit or an internal audit, um, generally what happens is they would request another sample. So for example, in my audit experience, if we would request the documents that just weren't available, we would extend the audit sample. So for example, if the audit sample initially was 10 document requests, mm -hmm. if there was gaps where we weren't missed, where we were missing maybe two or three of the documents, then we would, okay, we would say, okay, we'll extend the sample to 15 and we would pick five additional audit requests and hopefully those are present. Uh -huh. If they aren't, it's it's a bigger issue because then obviously there's contractual obligations that weren't being followed, okay. things like, uh -huh. there's penalties that are associated with it. Um, from an IRS perspective, it really is just gonna end up penalizing them on the back end because the data that's not available Again, the IRS needs the data to be able to plan and accordingly um, allocate any fees or any any type of um, costs that are associated with the document request. So if they're unavailable, we may have to end up paying penalties and it may just increase the costs in, in that fashion. But um, generally, those are the two general cases that I've seen. Okay. Uh-huh. So when you get assigned to a client that has never been audit ready or prepared for something like that at TGG is your go. I'm assuming your go-to is to make sure that we have the source documents and use those, but is there any other like first steps of action TGG normally takes? No, I mean, I would say, first of all, it depends on kind of the, the stage that the client is. If it's a new implementation and we don't know anything about the processes and procedures, I would say the first thing is to understand those processes and procedures, document them, because then we can work backwards. If we understand what's needed, then we can work backwards and say, okay, this process and procedure requires X, Y, and Z. Do we have mm -hmm. those documents to support those, those X, Y, and Z initiatives that we're taking? Mm -hmm. um, so from that perspective, I'd say that's step one. If the client is just not audit ready as a whole and they've been with us for a while, I don't see an example where that's going to be the case because TGG offers very, very stringent policies and procedures that we need to follow and make sure Documents are saved. We have share files that we set up for the clients and make sure that uh, you know the support is available, and we have checks and, and checks and balances to make sure that those steps are followed. So, from that perspective, I would say if it's a recurring client, it might not be as much of an issue. The the bigger issue is going to be for a new implementation, where again we just need to understand everything up front, and then we can work backwards from there and make sure we have everything that we would need to make sure that they're ready to to provide everything for the audit uh -huh. that's going to be required. Okay, awesome. So overall, if, if I was a new business owner and I've never been audited before and I just got audited and I'm super stressed out, would you say that as long as you have your documentation in line and you're following the processes, like you said, there's nothing to worry about? Yeah, generally speaking, I mean, unless you're doing something shady and, and then maybe <laughs> you would have a reason to be concerned, yeah. but... No, if you're on the up and up, yeah, if you have your documentation and you're openly communicative and everybody is on the same page, you know, there's going to be bumps in the road. That's just life. But as long as you're openly communicating and they understand kind of where things are at and you set realistic deadlines and you have the support to back it up, then no, everything should be reasonably uh, well done enough to not have to worry about it. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Of course. No, happy to be of assistance. Thank you.